my channel or welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is lauren and i'm currently pregnant with baby number five this is going to be my 15 16 17 week update due to valentine's day evan's birthday party being a teacher having four kids all that fun stuff and some not so fun stuff that's been going on in my pregnancy that has push back me making this video that I'll share with you guys. First of all, I'll just start with the bad news. Um, I had a doctor's appointment a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, and at that doctor's appointment, my blood pressure was higher than normal, and I also shared with my doctor my extreme itching that I've been telling you guys about. My blood pressure being a little higher than normal is worrisome because in my very first pregnancy i experienced severe preeclampsia it came on before 30 weeks which is pretty rare i believe and then it progressed quickly and aggressively and i ended up being on bed rest and then hospitalized in the hospital on bed rest and then transported to another hospital and told that I had to immediately deliver even though I was on all this medication. Since I haven't really had any problems with blood pressure since my first pregnancy and I'd never experienced that before, I really hadn't thought about it recently. Of course, my second pregnancy and even my third pregnancy, I was very worried about preeclampsia. Preeclampsia? I'm not sure one of those things. I haven't been worried about it that much and I feel ashamed of that because that experience was not that long ago and with being someone that is a fourth grade teacher and is married to a teacher who has a second job, who does YouTube, who has four kids already, preeclampsia would really throw a wrench into my daily life. And that's something that pregnant women really need to keep in mind because it's a real thing unfortunately. Some people go through it and when it happens, it can really throw a wrench into your pregnancy. And so I, I still have my blood pressure cuff from what I used whenever I was monitoring it at home when I was on bed rest with Evan before I was put into the hospital about two weeks or a week after being diagnosed with preeclampsia. And then the reason I'm worried about it is because with him, what happened was my blood pressure was perfect until it was slightly higher than it had been and then it began to slowly rise until it was in pre-hypertension, I think it was, levels. And at that point I started getting headaches I started seeing like static, kind of like TV static in my vision. I had a ton of protein in my urine, like seven times or more of the allowed amount in your urine. It was just, I had to do 24 hour urine collection over and over and over again. It was just not a fun experience. However, the first symptom was that my blood pressure was slightly elevated from what it had been. And that's what happened at my last appointment. And I am praying every day that it's just a fluke Maybe I was just worried about my extreme itching and finding out if I had a liver condition or not, which I was really worried about. Or maybe it was because also someone, whoever scheduled my appointment, they booked me with the wrong OB. So I was hoping that that's why my blood pressure was a little bit elevated, but has continued to be just a little bit elevated. My doctor just wants me to really take it easy and have no stress. But I'm a fourth grade teacher and state testing is coming up. However, that is not what's important. I'm trying my best to just stay focused on what's important and to not have a lot of stress so that I don't cause my blood pressure to go up. Although I know from experience that when you have preeclampsia, there's nothing you can do about your blood pressure at all. So I still just want to keep it as low as possible because many teachers I know have high blood pressure and I don't want that to be a problem for me because it hasn't been in the past. Also at that appointment, I found out that the reason I've been having such extreme itching that I keep telling you guys about, and I've been using that itching lotion, is because I'm allergic to my blood thinner. I have to do my injections of Lovenox every day. It's a blood thinner and for whatever reason, even though I tested negative for a clotting disorder, for whatever reason, it is what keeps my baby alive when I'm pregnant. Every time I haven't been on it, except for one time when I was on it, I lost our baby sometimes late um, without that Levinox, and so I have to give myself those injections every day. So for whatever the reason, it helps my placenta or something get enough circulation and get the nutrients to the body. We don't really know exactly what it does, but it helps me stay pregnant. So now that my doctor knows that I'm allergic to it, my body is creating a histamine reaction to it and the later in the day it gets, the more histamine my body is producing and causing an itching reaction all over my body um, because I'm allergic to the medication. 
However, we're not gonna stop the medication because that could mean that our baby doesn't make it. And in all likelihood, in my doctor's words, based on experience, he probably wouldn't make it. So that's the choice we're having here. And obviously I'd rather be miserable and itchy than not have our baby boy make it. So I'm going to continue the injections even though I'm become allergic to the medication, which is extremely strange because I was on this medication when I was pregnant with Jenna and the entire time I was trying to conceive her, I had no reactions. This is the exact same brand of Lovenox. We haven't changed anything. We have no idea why my body has developed an, an allergic reaction to it. It's incredibly unfortunate and it has caused nighttime for me to be extremely hard. I feel like I'm a positive person when it comes to pregnancy. I'm not a big complainer, but you guys, it has been very hard for me, especially when it gets around 8.30. It's just like, I'm scratching so much, especially in my chest area for whatever reason. I just scratch so much and my back and I'm still doing the itching lotion. Um, cortisone doesn't help, Benadryl does help, but unfortunately I can't drive and be a productive teacher and be on Benadryl all day. So I kind of wing it throughout the day, even though my doctor said I could take it, I just don't want to drive and be on Benadryl because it makes me really tired. But I'm also having really bad restless legs, which combine with itching all over, like unbearable itching. It just makes me so cranky. It makes me feel like I am going to crawl out of my skin. My battery on my camera just died, so if the lighting looks a little bit weird, I'm using natural lighting. There's been days when it's been really hard. It's been difficult for me mentally because about 8.30 is when it just all gets unbearable between my histamine reaction that's happening all over my body where I'm itching myself. I literally bought a brush with bristles on it that I could scratch my whole body because it's just so itchy. I'm itching right now so much. It's like 6, 15 right now, but the later in the day it gets, it gets so bad and 8.30 is like my breaking point. I don't, it's like I'm a ticking time bomb at 8.30 I'm just done. It's really hard for me mentally because that's usually the time that our boys go down and I get time by myself if Lance is working or when he's home in the afternoons and he's not working a second job, that's the time that we spend together just the two of us and it's that's the time that I'm not able to do the things I wanna do at that time because I just feel so miserable. On top of the histamine reaction of being allergic to the Lovenox, I am also having restless legs, which I've experienced a little bit before, but never like this. It's not been a recurring pregnancy symptom for me, but my I just lay on the couch and my legs feel so, like I need to move them, which is fine until I start feeling very agitated and anxious. It's such a bad feeling. I've heard that magnesium helps. I'm taking my prenatal vitamin. I wasn't taking it for a while because I was so sick. I'm not sick anymore, so I'm taking my prenatal vitamin, which has like 20% of your daily amount of magnesium, and then I'm taking a magnesium supplement on top of that and trying to eat almonds as well because they have some magnesium in it but not a ton pretty much right now all i can do is take benadryl and go to sleep at 8 30 which it's been hard because i'm not having any recharge time for myself but anyway things could be worse i don't want to sound like such a downer i hope you guys aren't sick of me but it's been hard it is hard not only when you have a pregnancy that you have to do progesterone injections on which are a pain literally and you have to do Lovenox injections, which are a pain, literally, in a different way. The Lovenox burns so much when it's inject injected in. And I have to do that every day, but then to be allergic to it on top of that and have other side effects, it's just a bummer. But this baby is gonna be worth it. And I'm just sharing with you guys what has been going on, and I don't mean to sound so negative. I just want to be honest with you and the truth is it's been hard. I don't know if any of the rest of you have a reaction to morphine. I don't know if any of you have been on morphine. I have been on it a lot thanks to C-sections. When I'm on morphine, I have an itching reaction. That's the exact same histamine reaction that I'm having with the Lovenox. So if you've ever experienced that, you know how I feel every day. So I just finished my 17th week. I'm actually in 
I'm 18 weeks in one day, but this is gonna be in my 15, 16, 17 week update because I haven't lived through my whole 18th week of pregnancy. But at 17 weeks, the baby is a little over five and a half inches and he is the size of a slice of cake. That's how big he is from crown to rump and then his legs are in addition to that. I'm still down two pounds as far as my weight gain goes. I've not been having as many food aversions or anything that I've had before. I've not been nauseous. I'm just not gaining weight and I really don't know why, but I'm not that worried about it because I did start off this pregnancy heavier than I have been in previous pregnancies. Not a lot. I'm not really focusing on my weight at all and my doctor's completely fine with me still being down two pounds, so I'm okay with that too. My symptoms this week, other than the lovely ones I shared with you already, is that I'm feeling the baby move so much. Once a day at least, I would say I feel him move. Some days I feel him move several times a day. I have been a little emotional. I've cried happy tears a few times, just been overcome with like good emotion to the point of tears. One of which was looking at my students' daddy-daughter pictures. There was a daddy-daughter dance at my school and I was just looking at the pictures that my friends were posting on Instagram and um, Twitter, Facebook, and I was just like, oh my gosh, like it's so amazing to have a daughter and I just feel so lucky to have one and I, it was just such a magical night for those daughters and those dads and I don't know, I, I was emo about it. I think I just feel really lucky that I actually have a daughter because I didn't think that would ever happen. And when I was looking at those pictures, I was thinking how I would feel had I not had Jenna, especially after everything we went through to have her and losing a baby girl. And then had we not been able to have her, looking at those pictures would have just been devastating to me. But I looked at it and I got to share in their joy and like know that one day we can experience that. I don't know. It was just... I was emotional. In my 15, 16, and 17 week, I've experienced soreness in my chest. As far as my cravings go, I'm still craving our filtered water at home. I'm craving hot Cheetos with lime. I've craved baked potato soup. Other than that, it's still the buffalo sauce from Outback, which is strange and Papa John's buffalo sauce. Both of those are different and so good. And then also Mexican candy. I drove all around and went to Mexican grocery stores to get Mexican candy, especially the chili covered watermelon, mango, and corn lollipops. If you've never had those, then you're not living. They're my favorite. Something really exciting this week is that I have felt the baby move more and more, especially when I'm laying down on the couch. I feel him. We also went to Monster Jam when I was 15 weeks and six days. The baby had started to be able to hear like two weeks before that, I think. The truck's engines were loud and the baby was moving around like crazy at Monster Jam from the noise and that was pretty cool. And then the other thing that was really cool was that at 17 weeks and six days, I was laying down on the couch and Lance reached over and put his hand on my belly, like pretty high up near my belly button and the pressure of his hand, I guess, pushing down. He was like, is the baby kicking right now? And I almost said no, but almost as the words came out of my lips, the baby kicked, and then he kicked again. And I was like, oh, he kicked, and Lance was like, I felt it. And then he kicked again, he was like, I felt it. And then he was like, I guess I'm smushing him. So he moved his hand, but it was really cool that he was able to feel him at 17 weeks and six days. I don't remember offhand him being able to feel Jenna that early, but I don't know, I'd have to look at her baby book. I haven't made any purchases this week for the baby. I've purchased a lot in these past few weeks, but not anything else for the baby. I've purchased Easter basket stuff for my kids. And yeah, nothing for the baby yet. I keep walking through Target and everywhere we go, like looking at the baby boy clothes, and I haven't seen anything that I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cute, I have to have it yet, so. I'm still looking for that. I taught fourth grade today, so I'm still dressed from work. This is the makeup I wore to school. So if I'm looking not as glowing as you guys like to say I am today, it's because it's been a day. But I'll show you guys my belly. I am wearing a maxi dress, so I'm not gonna lift up my um, dress. I'll spare you guys from that, but I'll show you guys what my belly looks like. It has grown substantially, I feel like. Especially when I wear a dress like this, I can kind of tuck my baby belly into my pants, which is not comfortable, but I do it a lot and it's probably not good. My friends joke that when I wear regular jeans and I tuck him in, 
<laughs> um, they say that he's gonna be born like with a big crease in his head or something, which is not funny, but today he's not tucked in, so he's out in all his glory. I'll show you guys what my baby belly looks like at 18 weeks one day. It really is like out up here at the top. It's so weird. Something else really exciting, which I hear Jenna talking about right now, is that she is doing so good on the potty. She pooped on the potty yesterday for the second time. She's asking constantly to go to the potty, so maybe I won't have two babies in diapers. Maybe, maybe. That's, that's exciting. It has nothing to do with pregnancy, really, but it's exciting. Anyway, that's really it I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so sorry it's been a while since my last pregnancy update, but like I said, I've had a really hard time in the afternoons. And that's usually when I edit and I've had things going on in the weekends since it was Evan's 10th birthday and all kinds of other stuff. I'm not trying to make excuses though. I do wanna still update you guys and I'm so sorry that it's been a while. I don't anticipate that happening again. It's just been kind of a new adventure, but I'll see you guys soon in my next video and thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed any part of it, please give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.